Morning folks, Lester here. Waking up early at Longhorn Lester's. And for good reason. We went to feed store last night. And as you can see, we got feeds to unload. Now we have a projects going on back at I'm a Survivor that we want to get back early for and get get going. It's also the weekend here. I don't know what time or what day you'll see the video on, but you know that on the weekends we don't have Ben for to come by and help. So we got LE coming by later this afternoon and everything else is up to me and Jamie. So we're gonna get started this morning, get our jobs done over here, and then hopefully be out of here pretty soon. It is early though, everyone's still laid, they're all still laid out. No one's moving around too much yet. Before we get going on a whole lot, I want to walk down and show you what happened here along the pond. So, our pond guy did come out. He did come out. He put some stakes in the ground. But let me go show you what the longhorns have done. It's a quiet morning. I'll tell you what, I never knew this pond was going to be such a headache. The other pond... The other ponds, plural, back at I'm a Survivor were so easy. I mean, the guys come out and got them dug in a couple of days. And then they just filled up and done. So these stakes were put into the ground for a reason. I don't know the exact, there he goes. I think the stake was in the ground right over here. Maybe... Maybe it was backwards. And so the mark right there is how high they want the clay to be. The clay has to be this high. Let me get down on my hands and knees to show you something. Because that's the only way we're going to level this pond out to where, to where water doesn't overflow while that end over there is still dry. So we're looking at quite a few loads of hay. Of hay clay needs to be brought in now of course the longhorns have knocked everything over so now we're going to need to have paul come back out and redo his stakes again i hate they've done that so i don't really know all the marks that are on here he has all kinds of different numbers marked and so they're going to bring in uh, <laughs> well, we can figure out real fast who did it. This is a who done it mystery. This will be a who done it mystery, y'all. And so let's think about our longhorns here, okay? Let's just go look at our longhorns. Y'all want to go look at our longhorns? Uh, all you pretty girls need to move out of my way. They're all sitting here dancing for me. All right, thank you for the pretty dances. I love your lovely gowns. Tat, I'm not looking for any trouble this morning. He's sitting here escorting his ladies to the to the ball. Uh, listen to me. This hair right here, this hair is only going to belong to one person. This is a who done it? Uh, why did you eat that? Why did you eat that hair? Hmm. All right, we're trying to figure out whose hair this might belong to, so we can know which of the Longhorns have came by and knocked all of those stakes over. Huh. All right. Y'all ready for this? Okay. Let's look you here. I'm going to zoom in to suspect number one. Mm, it's going to be blurry. Do y'all suspect that Santana right there could be the culprit? I'm going to say no. Let's jump all the way over to Pearl. Do y'all think that Pearl could be the culprit? I'm going to say no. Gracie, there's a slight possibility it could be Gracie. 
a very slight possibility it could be Gracie. But how much y'all want to bet? If I was a forensic scientist or an investigator, how much y'all want to bet that this hair belongs to suspect number four? <laughs> and the face says everything. Yes, it's not you sweet ladies, okay? It's none of you sweet ladies. You're all so sweet and kind. But I believe it's that one right there, that brute right there. Uh, Mr. Tat, why are you following me? Fine. And he's like, the evidence is gone. All of the evidence is gone. Now there's no case. There's no longer a case here. And he's right. There's no case. Bottom line is, uh, getting back to my point, the pond guys did come out. They put some stakes in the ground. That's where they're going to start dumping their clay. They're going to pack that clay in nice and tight. They're going to come by along the top of it and put some more of that, uh, I don't know if that's limestone or what that is, crushed limestone, make it nice and solid so that we can still drive over the spillway. And then uh, when water gets to a certain depth, it will overflow the spillway, but it will not get to that depth until the entire pond is full. And the only reason we want it to overflow into the spillway is so it can go into the culvert there on the back side and flow on down out of the property, back towards the river, instead of flowing back the back way into our barn. So it's... It's not genius engineering. It just requires a little bit of common sense. Did I just say that? Common sense? Anyway, uh, it's good to see the pond guys have come out and at least got some stakes in the ground. And at some point, I'm guessing Monday. Today is our Saturday. So I'm thinking that Monday they'll probably start that project, which will be good. And they says it'll be about five days of work, so... Hopefully by next weekend, it'll all be set up and ready. And then we can get some rain, fill this sucker up, and have us a really pretty pond. Once that happens, I would like to get a couple of windmills. I don't know how I'll keep them safe from that big galoot Tex knocking them over. Because he's going to probably try to do that. But what I'll do is put them somewhere. Uh, and I'll get the kind of windmills that have the aerator system so we can keep the pond nice and aerated for fish. We can stock it with nice fish, and it will be a really neat thing. And then I'm going to probably have to go get some geese. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want no geese. I do not want geese. But a geese will be really pretty out here. There are plenty of grass for geese to graze on. Why are you doing that to me? What is the point? What is the point? I didn't bring any food, okay? I brought no food. I brought no food, and this is very intimate. Out. That's very intimate. That's Charlie. Why are you trying to become like a tat? Tat, settle it down. That's Charlie trying to be like a tat. And then poor Susan over here has done nothing wrong. She's just a sweet little girl. I'll tell you what. If the Arms family is able to hatch that egg, I hope to God it's a female. They do not want to deal with none of this mess over here. They want to deal with that. That's sweet right there. That's sweet. This over here is sweet. Anybody would want one of these little sweet things walking around. Anybody would love a Tina or a Wanda. But ain't no one going to love a tat. It's, it's hard to love a tat. Hard to love a tat, y'all. I'm just going to say it. Hard to love a tat. Come on, kitties. Come on, kitty kitties. Come on out of here. Let me check their water while I'm here and go ahead and get that out of the way. unload this feed out of the SUV into the back of the Argo and then transport it over to the barn. All right, so what I've done is poured the cow feed out along the grass over here and I poured the bird seed out over here. 
Now, Millie and Fiona, I don't know why, they're eating bird feed. And that's just gross. But I'm happy they're feeling better. Then, you know, they've been spayed recently, a couple of days ago. And so this is the first day they're actually out and about helping dad with the chores. Come on, birds. These birds, they're the funniest creatures. Uh, careful there, Wanda. <laughs> Come on, Tat, show them where it's at. Tat, show them where it's at. Oh, my gosh. Come on, Tat, show them where it's at. He can find it. So I have five piles of bird seed over here. And it's not bird seed, y'all. It's my bird mixture. You know what I do. Now I do it. There we go. Tat's found it. Wanda, go over there with Tat. He's... Don't come messing with me. Wanda is eating the feed out of the back of the Argo, which belongs to Dixie, Beverly, and the goats because she's being a hardhead. Whereas all the other smart birds are going to find their, their very own piles of... There we go. Come on, sweet Susan. Let's go, baby. You're moving... Oh, no. See, here's the problem right here. The problem right here is going to be that one right there. She's going to say, you know what? I can come back and eat this grain later, but I want to go run them birds off that feed. And I'm not going to let her. Nope. Get back to your pile. Leave the birds alone. You're not that hungry. Go back to your pile. You have a pile of feet over there. Go to it. Come on. Go. Come on. So there's four piles of grain. And there's one that is on the far side of Tex that she needs to go get. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going, keep going. Right over there behind Tex is a pile of grain. Tex, there's a pile of grain for Gracie on the ground, right straight over there, y'all, right? Gracie, not, don't mess with daddy. Look at all this mess. Now they're all gonna do it. Now they're all gonna start trouble. It's like you need to have a name tag beside their plate. <laughs> y'all i did put out her very own pile of grain the only thing is she can't seem to find it it's right over there look on the ground right there and she's gonna go mess with my birds gracie i'm not letting you run these birds off their feed because you're too you're too dingy to go find your food there's food over there on the ground now walk over there. you was right there beside it use your nose follow your nose Follow your nose, baby. Keep going. Nope, keep going. Nope, nope. Wrong way. There you go. Follow your nose. Right. Almost by the kitty. By the kitty. By the kitty. See the kitty? Right. To the, to the left. Almost. Gracie, it's right there on the ground beside you. Gracie, follow your nose. Right there. Thank you, Lord. Sheesh. That's ridiculous right there. Hey, get out of the Argo. Go find your... Okay, I'm just going to drive away. Kitty, we're just going to drive away, okay? We're just driving away. Come on, little ones. Y'all be sweet to each other. Where's Ringo? Ringo, can you make it, buddy? Where's Mr. Ringo? Y'all be sweet. Come on, Ringo. I'm going to feed hay over here, buddy. What I'm going to do is just walk and throw out hay all along this fence line, like that. However, I'm going to use my other shoulder, the one that still works. You can just always spread your hay out a little bit so they don't end up fighting over it. Uh-oh.
So you're probably wondering why I don't give one flake to every goat. That's because one goat can't eat an entire flake. Now, sometimes they're going to try to um, bully it. You might say Ringo will take over his flake and no one else can have any. But he will eat until he fills up. Then he'll walk away. So one flake can feed about three or four goats. So being that we have 20 goats here, I throw all, always throw out four or five, six flakes. Now, if you're wondering what Mr. Huck's done over here, I'm going to show you. Because he's gotten his head stuck in the fence again. He's being a really bad leader lately. Buddy, you're missing out on all the good breakfast. You're missing out on all your good breakfast just because of a couple of dry leaves that you just couldn't find reason to leave alone. You look like a woolly mammoth. Look at all that fiber. All right, you almost got it by yourself. Chrissy, you're not gonna be able to help your baby. Huck, right there, oh, you almost had it right there, right there, now there. Look, look, you're right there. Pull back, pull back. There you go, now go eat. Thank you, Chrissy. Go eat, buddy. <laughs> go eat, little buddy. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you for being a good girl. All right, that's all I got for y'all today, but I'm gonna end this video with some puppies playing in the grass. So you guys don't leave yet. We're going to have some puppies playing in the grass right around the other side of the shop here. So y'all come with me and let's enjoy this as we close the video out and we'll see y'all tomorrow. Come on, babies, come on. Puppies, puppies. Hi, babies. <laughs> oh my goodness, all the puppies. Come on, babies. <laughs> come on, babies, come on, bear. Come on, bear. Come on, babies. Uh, y'all leave Fiona alone, she don't feel well. Oh my gosh. Hi, babies. Hello. Hello. Come on, bear. Well, I'm trying to love you. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to love. I want to love everybody. Come on, bear. Don't be so scared. Hey, Pugsley. Come on, bear. Bear. Bear, come out here. Let me go get bear. Come on, bear. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, be sweet, Chris. You're not so rough, baby. <laughs> oh, it's wet. It's wet. It's wet out here. It's wet. Baby, be sweet to the puppies. Don't roll. Chrissy, why are you playing so rough? No wonder bear doesn't want to come out here. Sheesh, Chrissy. Chrissy? No, I would. What is wrong with her? I know she's just playing, but sheesh. Babe, is she playing? I think she just ran those puppies back inside. Why? Uh. Well, that's horrible. Come on, puppies. I'm, gonna put her, I'm putting her back up. You have to. No, you can't play. They're going to be mean to the babies. She does not want them out here in the grass. She just doesn't want him to go places where they're not supposed to go. She wants him to know boundaries. Boundaries. Mama can't want you to leave. Oh, no. Bear is the smartest one of all. He knows Mama's going to be mean to him. So Jamie says mama just wants the babies to know their boundaries and she doesn't want them out and about yet, which might be a maternal instinct kind of a thing. So she wasn't being mean, she's being protective. And at this point, the only way to get them back into the, into the shop where she knows they're safe is to, well, drag them. <laughs> and I handle them a little bit. Yeah, it looks so rough though to me. It looks so darn rough. She's a good mama though. She wants them safe and- I know. No. Baby. Not near Carl. No, that's that's actually pretty smart. Don't let 
Let your troubles fester Come watch Longhorn Lester <laughs> Yeah, something like that